Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for today's video because we are going to catch up and do kind of like a chit chatty get ready with me trying out a bunch of new products from Kaleidos, Patrick Ta, Milk, Sephora, RMS. There's quite a few that I have in front of me that I am so excited to play around with and just talk about things that have recently been going on. But you guys, before we jump into it, if you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, hit the bell for notifications, new videos. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. But if you wanna see how I got this look using a whole bunch of new products and what's going on in my life, just keep watching. You guys, I feel like I'm sitting so low right now. I got a new chair and <laughs> if you go on TikTok and you've seen this like viral crisscross applesauce chair, I saw it and I was like, okay, I need a new chair anyways because the one that I had from off of Amazon, I'd be filming or just sitting and doing my makeup in the morning and I just start to sink. I'm like what is going on here? So I kept seeing this chair and I was like, all right, let me try it out because it does have a bigger like cushion. It does like move back. A little bit there's some flex and it doesn't have wheels on it which I appreciate because I feel like I would put my chair where I needed it to be and then the next time I'd get in it it'd be off center and I'm always like trying to re like center myself it's a whole thing if I if I look like I'm super low I feel like I'm super low but the chair is comfortable like I can't deny that that's not how I planned on starting this video but like <laughs> If like the height differential from my backdrop chair and all that seems off is because it is it, it's different I might need to move my filming stuff back a little bit anyways I have a whole I have a setup I am so excited to be back in my filming room I figured we would do kind of like a chit chatty get ready with me I have all this from Kaleidos I picked this up and then I got really busy with work and just all these things going on. So I completely forgot that I had it and I filmed with other things, but it's literally been sitting on the right side of my desk and all my other stuff is usually on the left. Even my drawer of new stuff to try out is on the left. So I was rearranging some things in the room yesterday, trying to put away some of my skincare out of the Romaine tote that I had. I found this box and I was like, I forgot I bought this. But some of the things in here I'm not gonna keep. I didn't remember buying the entire collection. It is super cute. This like jewelry box type of thing, it's kind of like a satiny feeling. But then inside, if I can open it, there's a mirror and then there's a whole bunch of like lip glazes, eyeshadows. There's two eyeshadow palettes. There's four cheeks which two of the shades aren't even like tones that I would wear. So it was weird that I bought them, but maybe I bought them thinking I was gonna put them in the giveaway. They're two tan shades. I'm gonna show them to you. I'm not gonna swatch them, but just when I was looking at this, I was just like, I don't remember purchasing all of this. I thought I had just done the two eyeshadow palettes, a couple of the lip glosses, cause they're really pretty and that was it. And like one or two blushes, but I have the entire collection. And then they also sent me their s soothing and smoothing detangler brush. I love Kaleidos' packaging. It's like that soft velvet feel. I can always use a new brush. The one I have is like, it's doing its thing, but I probably need to replace it here soon. And then it just has Kaleidos on the back of it. This I'm going to end up keeping, but there was like, there was also an eye, or no, like a face brush for highlighter or powder or whatever. That one in the collection, or went in the giveaway drawer already. I've been putting stuff in there for the holiday giveaway that I'm gonna do in like November, December time frame. So stay tuned for that. Make sure to subscribe and follow. This is one of the eyeshadow palettes. It's more of the gray purpley tones. Really pretty. And then this one is more, I mean, it's still cool toned, but it's more like just gray with kind of like a pinky under you. Like this one looks like it has a pink tone to it, but it is still gray and cool toned. I do love the packaging on this. Look at the design, it is absolutely stunning. Their packaging, chef's kiss. I, I don't even know what that was. I. It's a moment today. And then we have, the Untamed Glow Glossy Lip Glaze. That is a mouthful. So here's four of the shades. There's like two with glitter, 
kind of matte toned and there are three more. So these are all of them right here. I'm not gonna swatch all of them. I don't even think I'm gonna keep all of them. I feel like some of these are gonna end up in the giveaway as well. And then there's just this adorable hand mirror and it says Kaleidos right there. But I feel like this jewelry box will be super cute behind me and then I can store some things in there that I don't necessarily need like on my table or whatever. I have the worst, like it's getting cool. It's cooling down outside. I'm not disappointed in that. The weather has been a bit warm this summer and now it's cooling off, getting into fall. Kind of why I have my sweatshirt on. We had to turn the heat on in the house today. We haven't done that yet. So th that's where we're at with the weather. Now the blushes, these two first ones, I think I'm keeping, this is Pale Rose. I say that, but I look at it and I'm just kind of like, is that too light for my skin tone? And then this one is Angel Wing. I might not be keeping any of the blushes. Like it's a peachy shade, but it looks like it's too light. I need to look at the swatches online. And then Hot Shot is kind of a tan. And they're not even dark enough that they could be considered like a bronzer. And then this one is Pearl Bliss. There might, like the first two shades are really the only ones that I might keep. So also if you look at their packaging, like they all have different tones. These are more tan, these are purpley pink. All right, let me prime my eyes and we will dive in. I think of the two palettes, I'm thinking I wanna use this one that has the purpley tones in it. Okay, when I first open the palette, there is a little like clear insert and it tells you like this is the diffuser, this is base, and then so on and so forth. Um, looking at these shades, I'm gonna end up using all of them, I think but I, I don't necessarily know that I'm gonna put them in the order that they recommended. I like to put down my lightest shade in the crease, which technically is the diffuser shade, um, but I don't put them in the order of like base first, then diffuse, so on and so forth. So I'm gonna start with this light gray, like a purpley gray shade. It is very cool toned. I love the color story. I feel like the cool tone shades are perfect for fall. I'm still trying to get over being so short in this chair. So, and I'm just using my fluffy crease brush. You guys, it has been so busy. By the time you see this, you'll have seen the vlog in New York. I don't even know, like, I took so many small clips of New York and even driving there. Um, in the vlog, I talk about how my flight got canceled. They were getting crazy flooding. They were being told to remain in place. I didn't realize because I was driving and I wasn't on my phone or anything, but they canceled the first day of Sephora. So I'm kind of relieved that I had done my tickets for like the second day. I tend to not try and do like the first event day because especially if there's multiples, that's usually when they're working out some of the kinks. And I don't think they had everything figured out because they were running out of space. Like they had definitely sold all their tickets. And then there was just max capacity. I had done the gold ticket and we got to go in an hour early. We went in at 10 a.m. But going in that early was nice because I got to go on the first floor, check out some of those booths. I did make it upstairs, but I did have a master class that I had scheduled myself for, for Natasha Denona. Love her eyeshadow palettes, love the products I've used from her. Super stoked to have an affiliate code with her. If you ever need those codes that I have, I don't have many, they are in the drop down box. So you can go and check those out and save yourself some cash when you're making those splurges. But I was so excited to do the master class and everything, but I wanted to see upstairs first. The one thing I probably would do next time because they did record the master classes. We're supposed to be able to access them after the event, but they were also playing them on the TV screens upstairs. So you could also watch the master class without sitting in the audience. I didn't plan on asking questions. I didn't ask any questions. So for me, the master class, it, it was cool. I'd seen, I'd seen a similar video on her Instagram. So for me, because I do tend to watch those videos already, I don't know that I would do a masterclass the next time. It wasn't like you got to meet the person afterwards. Yes, you got to hear what they were saying and hear the questions in person. But for me, I don't think it was beneficial because I'd already been watching those tutorials online. 
I did get to meet Danessa Myricks, who I had just taken her master class on her birthday. And then I got to meet Patrick Ta at because he was in his little booth setup type of thing. All right, so I think we have a pretty good buildup. This is giving me like Corpse Bride vibes. More purple than blue, but like that's what I'm getting right now. We might get there with this shade right here. So I'm gonna start dipping into this shade. I will probably put it on with my compacted smudger. <clears throat> oh, also, if it sounds like I lost my voice, mm, I didn't. It's just, I've been feeling a little like nasally and because of the cold weather, I have like a nasal drip. So I think because I sleep on my back, that's why my voice sounds the way it does. It is what it is. But the event overall was a blast. I know I've seen some videos on YouTube and whatnot because I was just wondering like what people were saying about Sephora outside of like my perspective. It doesn't change how I feel about my like experience. I thought it was a really cool experience and everyone that I encountered, super nice. We just had a great day. People were so nice. There was a point where I got stuck downstairs after the master class only because they were at max capacity upstairs and downstairs and they had to form a queue to like let people upstairs. As people were coming down, it, it seemed like more people were coming downstairs than going upstairs. But at the same time, there were event staff that were also going up. There were people that had been coordinating things the downside was there were people in the queue with me in order to get out of the event you had to go between the first floor and the second floor and that was the exit for the exit for the essex where we were at to get your swag bag and whatnot so they had to wait in line in order to even leave the event because people i mean they were concerned security and staff were concerned that they were just saying they were trying to leave whether they were weren't like that's not up to me to make that decision but I mean, I wasn't standing in line that long. I want to say it was like 15 to 20 minutes just downstairs. Upstairs was another story because it was kind of like a zigzaggy line. Not a big deal. Um, I still ended up going to almost every single booth and vendor that I wanted to go to. There was only like two or three that had absurd lines. And I was just like, it is what it is. It wasn't meant to be. If I was meant to go and speak to that brand or see what they're releasing, because that was the cool thing. They were talking about their upcoming releases or what we we're going to see from them in the future. Some of them just had nice things to give away. If you saw the vlog, I did the unbagging haul at the end of it, which I got so much stuff. There's no way I'm going through all of it. Some of it ended up in the giveaway drawer for you guys. Some of it's going to friends. Gave a couple things to grandma. Luke got the YSL Myself cologne sample that I had gotten. He doesn't do a lot of like the body wash or whatever. And when I do like the face cleansers and stuff in the shower, he just uses the ones that I have in there that he thinks he's gonna like. So he is very low maintenance as far as that's concerned. And I think he does more skincare now. <laughs> that we're dating them before we were, we were. So Sephora was such a good time. I wish that maybe they had the cues set up a little bit better where you could kind of pay attention to where everything was because people were just forming a, a line or a queue, whatever. And they're like, no, 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 that's not where it's supposed to go. But there were no, no real signs saying no. They did have staff that had large lines that said uh currently full please come back or at max capacity please come back but they had a bunch of different things i just wish it was laid out a little bit differently so like i said i got the gold key ticket they had a lounge for gold key purchase the lounge was upstairs so in order to even go up there and sit down and wait my turn i had to get upstairs first so that i think would have been nice to have like on the first floor kind of tucked out of the way so those that were like not wanting to wait in line or just wanting to relax because that was the nice thing they had couches and chairs they had a fridge set up with beverages and it was just oh a place to sit down and relax because otherwise there wasn't a lot of places to sit down unless you were taking photos like on the little like swing if you follow me on instagram i posted some of those pictures but you know i, I wasn't the event planner those are just hindsight's 2020 type of things like if i had been that would have been like a cool thing to do i would have liked that lounge to be downstairs so that you could access it while the upstairs was jam-packed and so be it there was literally some of the 
brands that I wanted to go and check out, like Dior and Charlotte Tilbury, which I had gotten to before I went to the master class. Um, those were upstairs, some of those bigger brands. But downstairs was a lot of the skincare, a lot of the makeup was upstairs. I'm gonna go back into this light shade, just on the outer edge, a smidge. I ended up doing this a little bit darker than I expected. I got carried away while I was talking. Outside of Sephora, it was such a good trip. I, like I said, I was trying to get Luke to go with me. His work schedule just wasn't like lining up. My friends had some things going on with like their work and my sister was out of town for her birthday that her boyfriend had planned and surprised her with. So it was just a solo girl travel, which I had a lot of fun anyways. I have always been that type where I can still go and do things and not feel awkward doing them by myself. I was a loner growing up. I like people, but I don't always agree with them. So sometimes it's fine going and doing things by myself. All right, I'm gonna go into this darker shade. And there's not really names of them. I mean, the palette's name is Twilight Rush but there's no shade names. So I'm going to take my pencil brush, dip in ever so slightly because there is a glitter. And I think I wanna do the purple just right through here. Ooh, I don't know. It's not picking up on camera, the silver glitter. If you hear what's going on outside my window, they are doing some construction on the road. I cannot dictate the city and the things that they do. But the same night of Sephora, so when I got done with everything and went and grabbed my swag bag, which, <sighs> holy cow, there was even more stuff in that swag bag than what I had in my regular bag. And I'm so glad that they gave them out at the end of the event and I wasn't carrying it around the entire time. It was just absurd. I also think that there's a lot of cool products in there that I wouldn't have necessarily purchased myself. So that was like a cool experience to just kind of check those things out. And I have been using some of them. I used the Fable and Main hair oil last night and washed my hair today. Granted, I did end up, I was gonna put my hair down and then I was like bothered. Um, so of course it's in a bun. It is like my go-to type of hairstyle. But do you ever just get like that where you're like, I don't wanna do anything with my hair. I did do my hair with, or I did like put the Fable and Main on and it, Felt so good. Um, smells delicious. But that same night, so I got done with the event and I decided to head back to my sister's apartment in Brooklyn because my battery was dying. I should have gotten one of the uh, charging blocks. I have one, I couldn't find it. Hindsight's 2020, I should have taken it with me. I've used it before when I've traveled. It is what it is. Now I'm gonna go into this purpley shimmer shade. And I think I'm going to pick this up on my middle. Uh, I'm picking up on my ring finger. Mm, so buttery smooth. Look at that, it's so luscious. But I went back to my sister's house so I could just charge my cell phone and just kind of relax. Because I didn't realize walking around talking to all those people was going to wear me out. I didn't get up super, super early. Like I planned on getting up earlier, but I didn't. I slept in a little bit later and still tried to take my time getting ready. It is what it is. But I just wanted to rest my feet. I did change my clothes. I think it, I changed into like a sweater or something because I was like, usually theaters are pretty cold. And it was, it absolutely was. So I'm glad that I did change into a sweater. That way I could stay a little bit warmer. Dixon is not happy with the people out on the street doing whatever they're doing. Ooh, I really like this. All right, let me go do this eye and I'll be back for other new products I picked up. Okay, I have a couple new skin products. I don't usually show you what I already have in my collection unless it goes along with what I'm doing that day. So I am going to be using the Danessa Myricks. What is this? The Blurring Balm Powder in Universal. This I got as like a deluxe sample from Sephora when I made a purchase. She used this in the masterclass that I watched and I'm super excited for it. But I also have the RMS Beauty Natural Finish Foundation. So this I'm really excited to try out. I think I got the right shade. And then I'm of course gonna use the RMS 
Revolve Radiance Locking Primer. Love this. So I'm going to use this as my combo today instead of like the Tarte Timeless and see how it performs before I use the new foundation. I also have a cream contour palette. This is the Makeup Forever one. This is the one I got for free at Sephora. Super stoked for this. I have, I think, contour, bronzer shade. I don't know that I need anything under eye. I am using a concealer I already had in my collection. And then the new Milk Makeup Setting Powder. I have mine in translucent light. I was looking at medium and I was thinking it might be a little too dark because there are some times that I don't go to the tanning salon. Like right now I'm like three days post tanning salon. Four days? Maybe four days. I don't go every day. I don't go every other day. I just go when I'm like, mm, I should go and just get a little refresh. Especially in the winter when there's no sun, the tanning salon, like the tanning bed, just gives you the like radiance you need if the sun was out. So that is what we're going to do. I'm going to kick it off with the RMS Reevolve Radiance Locking Primer. I really like this. It has some really good skincare in it. And my skin looks beautiful when I'm using it. And I just like to press it in around like my porous areas. And I've talked about how I like prefer the sample sizes because I try so many new things. This for me, when I saw this as like a deluxe sample um, for Sephora, I was like, I'm gonna get that. I actually had, there's like a Christmas kit that Danessa Myricks is doing where it's this as well as their balm blush. I was gonna get that. I still want the blush. Don't get me wrong, I still want the blush. If I like this, I'll still get that kit because then I have two of these. And I'm really excited to try this because we were. I was talking to her, I was like, I'm an, early, I'm an oily gal and you were showing some tips and tricks and I was just so excited for it because I was so nervous to try the Yummy Skin, is it the serum foundation? And she was like, you can still use it being an oily gal. And I was like, yes. So I just, I wanted to try it out and it makes me nervous buying full size products because I'm like, crap, am I going to wear all of this? Am I going to use everything? All right, so I just put this right here. And it's supposed to be a balm that becomes like a powder and like sets that area. We'll see how that goes. I'm just grabbing it and hoping like it heats up on the finger. Just tapping it in. It has like, there's not a like strong scent, but there's something and it's not horrible. My problem areas are my lines right through here, and my pores right through the T-zone. I did get the Say Glowy Serum type of stuff. I did not want to use it along with the new foundation. I'm going to use it next time and see if I prefer it, just because I don't want to have all these new skin products and not know what was causing the issue, if there's any issues. All right. So it doesn't look like it locked out the pores, but I won't really know until I go to use the foundation and everything else. We'll see. Because this pore eclipse from MAC is supposed to also like blur all that out. Literally, I'm using all like the blurring products today. <laughs> also with this, I'm getting it ready to like be ready. It does have a sifter so you can turn it and everything. So we're gonna go into the foundation. I have it in the shade 33.5. I do like that you can actually take this out and get a refill get a refill for it. It makes it so nice so you're not having to pay all that extra money just for the cartridge when you're just paying for the refill. All right, here goes nothing. It is like covering everything. Oh, where was I? So I completely forgot I was telling you guys a story about New York. So then um, I changed and I headed into the city. I completely forgot to eat all day. The first meal I had was the Reuben that I showed you guys at the deli. 
in like not too far away from Times Square. That was the first meal I had all day outside of like beverages. Okay, I really like how my skin looks right now. And it's not a bad shade match. To shade match online, not too bad. I do need to like obviously bring it down a little bit. So one pump will get this. All right, pump is not liking the component. Or maybe it's just the air pump trying to catch up. The primers do feel a little glowy, which is nice. And that was the other thing is that day I didn't take any of the trades and usually I take the trades wherever I go but I was just like in a hurry and I was like I just want to relax I don't want to have to guess because trying to change trains when you're tired especially if you haven't been doing it second nature like I was when I was living in Japan can be monotonous especially because you're like watching to see if your stop is coming up and I just I didn't want to deal with it so I did take lifts like that entire day the one cool thing, Sephora, they did have a one-time code that you could use, like leaving the event. So I did do that and it, one of my like $30 lifts was only like $11. And that was before tip, which was really nice to have, especially cause I didn't have to think about catching the trains and maneuvering around while lugging all of this stuff because we were also limited on the size of bag that you could take in they also said you weren't allowed to bring umbrellas but then we had the massive like torrential downpour the day before and it was still raining that morning i think they were actually still letting people bring their umbrellas in even though it did say that they weren't going to which was nice so they did adjust based off of like the current situation all right, I didn't put too much on my forehead only because I don't like to like put so much up there. I'm gonna end up contouring, so some of that's gonna get covered up anyways, and then powder will tend to just diffuse it out. All right, so make sure that we get up here in the corners. I really like this. One thing I will do, especially with like my glowy foundations, my dampened sponge, I'll just take it and make sure it gets the excess out and kind of pushes it into the skin. Cause now I'm gonna go and do the contour before I do my concealer and powder and try all that stuff out. Cause I remembered I got cream products this time. All right, so the Makeup Forever HD Skin Palette. I'm gonna go into this shade for contour and this shade for bronzing. I need to clean my brushes so bad, you guys. They're so gross. But that night I did go to see Harry Potter and the Cursed Child on Broadway. That show was so good, I ended up got tickets in the balcony like the front row of the balcony there was still the dress circle in front of me but the distance between like my seat and their seats and the differential in height didn't bother me or anything still like super easy to see and i think i still probably had better seats than they did because there were things that were happening down below like with the dementors and all that and i was able to see all of that and they were like they had this ledge that was about this wide wide that they like had to look over and it was just kind of like awkward and i felt so bad because i was just like i'm glad i didn't get those tickets but my tickets were less than a hundred dollars for the front row of the balcony and i was like dead center so i got to see pretty much everything with no issues no blocking I had so much leg room like we talk about it on airplanes where you just want all the leg room i had all the leg room Cause you know when you're sitting down and you're comfortable and then someone's like, I gotta use the restroom and they're like climbing all over you to get out of the row. I didn't have that issue. That was the other thing. I was like, okay, let me get center row because I am less likely to have people climbing over me to get out of their seats. I am all for it when I'm planning where I'm sitting. I like that. Just soft, subtle. I really like that. And even the girl next to me, she was solo too. Like they're, there were couples next to us on either side, but she and I were both um, solo girl type of travels by ourselves. Which sometimes that's the best way to go. Cause then like, I hate when people, while well, you're trying to watch the show and pay attention, cause there were so many details to watch are trying to talk to you. <laughs> like I miss that. And I hate missing parts of a show. And it's just kind of like, I didn't have to worry about that because like Luke will, he'll have a question or whatever. And I'll try and answer it, but it's just like, I, I don't want to miss anything. 
Like, I, I just want to see it. So that's the thing is just like, I don't mind doing some of the solo girl type of stuff because then I don't have to worry about someone ruining it. Not that they're going to, but like some people don't care about like you wanting to watch the show and they'll ruin a movie by talking through the entire thing. And I'm like, I can't have that. I don't need your commentary. That's just my opinion. Anyone else like that? All right, now into bronzer. I do feel like my brushes are a little bit bigger than the pans so it's making it messy and I don't like when my makeup is messy. It's weird I'm sure. Are you the same way? Do you like your makeup to be nice and clean and not make a mess? The rest of the trip was a lot of fun though. I went on the St. Patrick's Cathedral tour and the catacombs which they are currently in New York, the only like public catacombs that you can tour. It was quite interesting to see some of them. I still haven't posted pictures on Instagram. I just, I'm not sure I'm going to do that. Like the catacombs, they're, they're people's resting spaces. I have the pictures, but there's part of me that's just kind of like, so like I took pictures when I was in the Paris catacombs and those are interesting. I didn't post a lot of those pictures because those like you had exposed bones you also didn't know who they were. Like they just put them all in there and they had no idea who the remains belonged to. Some of them they know, some of them they don't, um, but it was quite interesting to see. Now these are like family tomb crypt type of things. So they know who they belong to. They know who's supposed to be in there to an extent. And the, even the graveyard outside of the cathedral, the tombs are made of, lo of limestone, which pretty much melts. So you couldn't tell some of the names on there. All right, subtle, a little bronzing, a little contour. I'm gonna go ahead and do my concealer and then powder. I'm not going like heavy handed on bronzer and all that tonight, today. We're just probably gonna like go run some errands, take it easy. One of the things that I learned from the masterclass and it has been helping me. So when I do my concealer and I first blend it out, I use my sponge. When I go and like redo it before I set the powder, Natasha Denona's recommendation with her high glam concealer because it's self setting is that you go back in with your finger to warm it up and just press it out of the lines because that was one of the complaints was that it was falling into creases and they're like, it's not supposed to crease. And she's like, you're right, it's not. But if you have creases, you're gonna have it. So she said to use your finger to go back in and tap it out. That is what I'm gonna do. But I'm using the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer. Dampening sponge. I don't know if RMS has a concealer. I don't remember looking for one. I probably should have when I bought the foundation, but it is what it is. I'm just using something that I have in my collection that I know I like and it's pretty on the face. They are making so much noise out there. All right, so picking up setting powder from Milk Makeup. And I don't know what the verdict is on this powder. I haven't watched any videos. I just figured I would make my own opinion. It looks pretty good. I can't use this as judgment because my under eyes are never my favorite. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. I will say the Milk Setting Powder does have multiple shades, so you're not stuck with just translucent light or translucent medium. There's like a couple different shades. I wanna say like six of them. I really hope you guys can't hear everything that's going on outside this window because it sounds like chaos. And I know one of Luke's friends just popped over because um, when they got back from deployment a couple months ago, they had a whole bunch of gear and Luke let them store it in the garage because they were gonna they were coming back out here because they had gotten a job in the area so they went home to pack up stuff from their house and then move out here so it didn't make sense to take it back just to move it back out here so they are out in the garage doing that too so there's just so many things right now going on we'll make some decisions towards the end on whether or not I like 
everything that's going on with my face. I do know that I need to brush off some of this powder. Okay, now I need to finish off the under eye. And I think I'm gonna go back like in the same order that I used everything else. Start out with this lighter shade all the way underneath. I've been using that little hand mirror, but there's a mirror inside the palette. Also, you guys, I have started to post on TikTok more often. If you want like the short length of the tutorials, go check those out over there. I don't know if I'm gonna keep doing just makeup content on TikTok. I haven't been one of those that has like definitely explored the options on TikTok, but there, there's things that I can do outside of makeup on there. I'm gonna go into this shade right here. Same thing, bring it all the way to the, like the middle. You guys, New York was so much fun. I didn't want to come home, and my sister was sweet enough to schedule me a facial at the spa that she works at the day that I would have driven home. You guys saw if you watched that vlog that I ended up going back on Tuesday. Stopped to get sushi around and just enjoyed my drive back. Now we're gonna go into the shade just in the outer V, in the outer corner, using the pencil brush. But I did tell my sister that I need to make it back. I have some things going on in the first of the year and the end of the year that are kind of blocking off some time. And I know that I need to go back and visit my sister. So I did tell her, I was like, hey, we gotta figure out a time. Even if it's just me driving up there for a long weekend or whatever, it's possible. It's just knowing what her schedule is like, especially with the holidays, they're pretty busy up there. So it just, granted. I go up there and she'll work and then we'll meet up after work and just do dinner or whatever. So I'm not limited to her schedule. We usually tend to make it work, um, but we'll figure it out. I do want to see her before all the chaos ensues in the new year. And mm, I love not knowing the future of my like schedule. That is one thing I don't think I'll miss when I retire from the military is that the unknown the not knowing and it's not in your control. It's dictated by somebody else. That I don't like, but I've done it for 19 and a half years. You would think I'd get used to it by now. All right, so that is where we're at with this. We do need some blush to liven up these cheeks. Cheeks? Cheeks. To liven up the cheeks. All right, so the two that I think I'm keeping is, this one is Pale Rose, and then this one is Angeling, which is a little peachy. I kind of, let's see, we're going to spot swatch. Okay, so I think we're going to go with the pinky shade. So we're going to go with Pale Rose. Here is my blush brush. This is very pale, so I don't know if this is the vibe. All right. Can you see it? I already swatched them, so they are in my collection until I give them to someone else. Okay, it looks like they're starting to build. All right, very pretty when it starts to build. Okay, I did not know that that was like the thing. Okay, it is very subtle. It is pretty though. You gotta remember, Kaleidos is an Asian beauty brand. They are very fair skinned over there. They don't go out and tan intentionally. So being on a pale cheek is probably very much intended. I loved Asian beauty when I was over in Japan and when we would go and pull into Korea or Hong Kong, I would always go and check out the Asian beauty brands. I love their makeup. I love the packaging, it is so cute. Just so cutesy, uh, kawaii, which is cute in Japanese. I absolutely loved it. And going to Harajuku and just seeing all the Harajuku girls and their style, like there was just, it's not just a Gwen Stefani song. I am so sorry, it is not just a song. Um, it is a whole thing and a vibe. And then even then, so I'm so used to like American goth where it's just black and grays and 
cool toned everything. When you're talking about Japanese goth, it's very like heavenly and pale pinks and white and it is not the goth we are used to. Yes, there are some that do like the darker tones, but there are a lot of the very cutesy like white fabric, pale pinks, like super cute. I absolutely loved it and they would have their hair dyed pink and just something I would always aspire like I would love to dye my hair pink. There's part of me that's like, I'm dyeing my hair lavender purple when I get when I retire. I will be like 42 years old and I will probably try. I have not decided, um, but I have had to keep my hair in standards. Um, and we've talked about this in another video. If you wanna know the military standards I adhere to, that is one of the videos I did a couple months ago. I talk about what I'm required to stay within. I can technically do my hair blonde. I can do my hair red. My hair is naturally auburn. But I can't do fun colors like purple or pinks. I, lo I would love to, but I feel like I'm going to have a teenage moment in my 40s where my hair is like a pastel color. I am pretty sure. <laughs> All right, so the cheeks, very light and neutral. We are gonna do highlighter. I just pulled the highlighter in Ice Me Out. It's kind of like goldy toned. Maybe I should have done cool toned. Too late now, I already pulled it. And then even getting back from New York, I just, as soon as I got back, I immediately went to work. And then this weekend has been really busy because we had different events on, what do we do on Friday? <laughs> Oh, I didn't do anything on a Friday. I wasn't feeling good. I just had like the worst pressure headache and sinus infection. So I just stayed home. I had a event with Luke because we do things called hail mails. Uh, when you get new people or people are leaving your command, you do kind of a get together and you hail the person that is coming in just to introduce yourself, say, hey, like this is who we are. And then the bail is for person that's leaving and you guys get to say your goodbyes or whatever. I was supposed to go with Luke. I was not feeling up to it. I just decided to be a bum and watched movies. Kind of caught up on some of my stuff that I needed to do around the house. Did a little bit of laundry. Just grown up people things that I haven't been doing because I have been gone on travel and work events. So I'm just kind of caught up with that. I do I guess a small health update. So my back is getting better. I've been cleared to do assisted weight training. So I've been, you know, going to the gym and doing the weight machines, not free weights or anything like that. Gotten into like the leg presses, trying to build up my muscle mass and everything. Slowly doing back workouts, but those are still like not my favorite. My back's not a super fan of them. So I've been just taking it easy. As far as the kidney is concerned, it is one in a thousand. There are plenty of people out there who are only born with a single kidney and they don't know it until something crazy happens. Either their kidney starts to malfunction, they're not feeling good, or you get an MRI for your back and it just happens that way. I have gone, so since then I've had the MRI, they did an ultrasound, I've done a CT scan, I've now got a referral for nephrology. But during the CT scan, they had me, prior to I had to drink this dye, and they had me in the CT scan machine. They had me do a couple different things just to kind of like get the images. The doctor that was doing the scan was so intrigued by my case that he wanted more scans. So they had me actually turn over on my stomach so they could get the images through the back. If you know anatomy or you can go and look it up, you usually have two kidneys, one on each side. And they have the little, I don't even know what they're called, stems the things that feed into them. And then on the bottom of the kidney, and I only know this term because they told me, you have ureters that lead to your bladder. So it's your kidney will filter out the product that you don't need or whatever, and then drains into your bladder and then you gotta pee. Weird, right? I don't know. I I was supposed to be a corpsman. I decided I don't wanna stay in medical. Learned so many things because of this. Well, what they found during my CT scan is I only have one on my left side and it's actually enlarged and like horseshoe shaped. Um, it does have the one tube coming from the top, but it adjusted and I have two ureters coming off of my one kidney feeding into my bladder. So it's still technically doing the job of two, but has mutated, grown, adjusted, whatever term you want to use to do the work of two as one. Weird. Uh, so technically my kidneys are healthy. There's good blood flow. They're doing their job. They're, I, 
I, I've got a good clean of health as far as that. Good clean bill of health as far as that is concerned. Which puts me at a little more ease. And I've even been told like, okay, you don't need to change your diet that much. There's certain things like if I had kidney disease that they would tell me like, don't eat these products or, you know, lay off of it. One of them is like, don't eat a lot of salt. I don't add salt to things if I don't need to. And then stay hydrated. I've been told that my entire military career, make sure to drink water. So we're good to go. As far as us concerned, as far as the Navy is concerned, like I'm healthy. So that's relief. And there's still specialists I've got to go see, and I'm sure there's going to be more things that come from it, but it, I'm not as stressed knowing those things, and it, it puts me at ease. Now, I need to go ahead and do my brows. I need to fill them in, and then I have the Patrick Ta Major Brow Lamination Gel. Got this at Sephora. And then mascara. I'll probably come back for both of these to show you guys, um, but I have the Sephora Size Up Volume Extra Large immediate super size volume mascara both got at sephoria and then we of course have the lip glosses i need to figure out which ones i'm keeping which ones i'm getting rid of and I'll try on the ones that i'm keeping okay you guys i'm back so we can laminate the brows i did fill it in with the anastasia it is the brow definer from anastasia beverly hills i am almost out of it it was just like a sample but this i was looking I was looking at the wand. It has the weirdest wand on it. So the one thing I usually do is I'll pull backwards through. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I'm gonna try it anyways and then see. But I want my brow hairs to just be up and ready to be eliminated. Oh, this dries so quickly. That was a mistake. Mm. No. Oh my goodness, you guys. This one has a mind of its own right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through backwards with this one and then go through with the gel. That is the move. Use a regular spoolie to bring these backwards and then go through your brows naturally. Um, they are super glued in. This is why I try it, so you don't make these mistakes. Let's see, can I like, oh my goodness, you guys. <laughs> All right, that let me kind of like untame it and like fix it, but it was like instant cement. We're gonna let those dry. I'm gonna do my mascara. We will assess in a second. That dried down so quickly. I didn't even have time. I had no time. All right, so the Sephora Size Up Immediate Super Size Volume Mascara. That is the spoolie. The brush on it right, let's let's see I haven't used a Sephora mascara in years it has been so long and I don't know why because Sephora has some good products I just don't like reach for their stuff I don't go into that section but I've used some of their stuff in the past like their concealer their concealer is so good one coat and I feel like they've got some oomph one of my favorites right now is the Huda Beauty One Coat Wow. That makes your lashes look phenomenal. Or even like the Maybelline Falsy Surreal. These aren't bad. I mean, you can see a difference even with my liner on. All right, let's go do a second coat before I move on to the next eye. It's okay. I'll use it. Like, I don't mind it. And being Sephora brand, it can't be as expensive as like Huda Beauty and some of the other... Ah, uh, of course I would do that. I'll get that off here in a minute. Let it dry down and use a spoolie to flake it off. One more coat. And that's the thing is like, if I don't have to do like 15 coats to get my lashes to look like falsies, then I don't want to. Not too bad. Let me, <laughs> let's see, is this dry? Um. I'm like that, that's gone. Just a spoolie, that's all you gotta do. Okay, now I have chosen five of the lip glosses to keep, all very different. Um, I'm going to put these two, they are the cool tone shades. And honestly, when I look at them, they look very similar. Hot Pursuit and Last Smoke, they're cool toned. I, I'm not a cool toned vibe. I have one in my collection from Il Maquillage. I'm gonna keep that one. I'm going to pass these on. All right. 
<clears throat> looking at these. I think I want to go lightest to darkest. All right, so this first one is Skinny Dip, and it is a tan shade. Ooh, it's a cool tone tan. I know, I just said I was going to keep it cool tone. I like this because it's not purpley in tone like the other two are. There's no scent to it either. It is literally a lip gloss to make your lips look glossy. <laughs> There's not a lot of tone to it. It's just going to amplify your lip color, but maybe like tone it down a little bit. I can see kind of the tan shade to it. If I did more layers, it might be more tan, but I'm, I'm not about that vibe today. All right, and then we got a handy dandy makeup wipe. This is Elixir and it is a kind of mauve pink shade. I could wear this one to work. Ooh, I really like this. Very pretty pinky tone. This might be my shade for today, but I've still got three more to try. Next is Pink Marquee. This one is a little bit pinkier. I do love the packaging on this. I don't really think I showed you guys. shade as well. I don't know that I want to go this dark with this eye look. We'll see. I still have like a gray silver glittery lip gloss. It, it could be the vibe. All right and we're moving on to the glittery ones. This shade is Penthouse. Look how magnificent that is and before I go into it like look at the packaging. It is stunning. I don't have any packaging like this. It's so pretty. Oh. Oh. Mm. And it doesn't feel gritty. Oh, I really like this. And I think on top of a red lip, this would be everything for the holidays. Ooh, I really like this one. Maybe I'll use this today. Do I need glitter? And the last one is Freefall. I went back and forth on whether I should keep this, but I'm very tempted to purchase a liquid, a black liquid lipstick. Oh, okay, this is like a silvery gray. Hmm, this is the vibe today. I am probably sticking with this one. is it like the silver glitter I don't think it's coming across on camera this is like the whole vibe I really like these glosses they are super shiny I think this on top of like a black lips liquid lipstick or even on a red would be gorgeous and this one for sure on top of a red mm. okay you guys this is the final look and I really like how it turned out the eyeshadows I am not disappointed Kaleidos usually has beautiful eyeshadow palettes. The colors are stunning. I love this purple glitter. The little quad, like it told you exactly what you needed to use it for. And I feel like those shades are so cohesive. You could also just use one or two of the shades if you wanted it all matte. You could just do the darker shade and the glitter if that's what you wanted to do. I like having the diffused look. It's not everyone's vibe. The blush, I wasn't so sure about. It was buildable. I did have to dip in quite a few times, but if you're on the lighter side, it probably is going to be your type of blush. Uh, anything darker and you're probably not going to see it on your skin tone. Just let's be realistic. Now, as far as skin is concerned, I like the foundation. I'm not so sure about the blurring balm. I need to try it again. Get a feel for it. Maybe it wasn't the right primer for um, like because I used RMS. There were a different suggestions on how to use it during the um, master class from Danessa. I need to go back and check and see. Maybe I didn't use it right. I like it. I just don't know that it blurred my pores as much as like Tarte Timeless does. I can, I'll play around with it and see what I think. As well as the 
foundation. I like it. I'm going to try it with a couple other primers and see. Maybe my Stila, which is a blurring, or my Cali Ray. I want to see how they work well with it. But the coverage is beautiful. This, the, the shade match. I, I think I did pretty good. The contour palette from Makeup Forever. Not a new product. It's been out for a little bit, but it's new to me. And I really like just the subtle contour and the bronze that I got. I didn't use every single shade. I got to play around with it and see what to do as well as the powder like i need to see it with a different foundation different primer combination and see if maybe like it changes my mind i don't hate it but i don't know that i'm in love with it now the brow lamination from patrick ta if you want your your brows to just lay down it will do it you guys saw it was like cement it will let you brush through and fix your brows when you mess up but they're not going anywhere the mascara from Sephora. I don't hate it. I also don't think I should have to work that hard for my lashes when you tell me it's going to volumize. And I have pretty long voluminous lashes already and mascara is just like a helper. If you don't have lots of lashes I don't know that that's going to be like your go-to mascara. There are other ones that I would recommend like the Huda Beauty One Coat or even Fan Frest from Benefit, the Surreal from Surreal Falsies from Maybelline. They are angry out there. But you guys, that is it for this look. I love a lot of the products I tried out. I will continue to use them. See if there's anything that maybe if I change it or tweak it, and I will try and remember to update the drop down box with my thoughts. But you guys, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the bell for notifications of new videos. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And until my next video, you guys, bye. I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.